Hey Run Junkies, Happy New Year's Eve. I am sitting here in the middle of taper, which means there's absolutely nothing to report besides the typical taper crazies. Pondering what I did or didn't accomplish in 2016 and looking ahead to my goals for 2017. 2016 was basically a medalless year. 2015 was pretty heavily loaded, so I wanted to spend this past year kind of recovering from that and looking ahead to what was going to happen in 2017. Early this year, I was just going to get moving again and then. I decided I was going to try the Boulder Boulder 10K in May for the first time. Took that a step further and I decided that not only was I gonna do the Boulder Boulder 10K for the first time, I was gonna try to PR a 10K. That ended up not happening because I overtrained. I got injured due to overtraining. That is all on me. What did end up happening was I finished the Boulder Boulder 10K and I enjoyed it so much that I decided I was going to do it again. So that was this past spring. In the fall, I had two races on my calendar in September. The first was the Arvada 10 miler in early September and then the Happy Girls Half Marathon in Spokane, Washington during the Another Mother Runner retreat. My original goals for either one of these races was to get a solid proof of time that I was hoping to use for the Dopey Challenge. I wanted a better corral for the Dopey Challenge but I had a pretty lackluster time for the 2015 Avengers Half Marathon. However, when I started heart rate training in July, I didn't feel like I was progressing speed wise the way I would have liked. So I skipped that 10 miler altogether. And then when I started getting close to the Happy Girls race in Spokane, I started hearing rumblings about a trail race. If you've never done a trail race, it's very different from a road race. I realized going into that race, once again, I was not going to get a better proof of time than what I already had. I didn't want to risk getting injured, so I just took that one nice and slow. What that meant was all of my big goals that I had for myself for 2016 were effectively out the window. So what is the point of all of this? It's certainly not to feel sorry for myself. First, we set goals for ourselves as runners, right? Sometimes those goals are reasonable, like PRing a 10K. Sometimes we think those goals are reasonable, like doing a 215 half marathon that ends up being on a trail when you can barely do that in a road race. <laughs> Setting realistic goals is one thing, but the true test is what we do when life throws a wrench in the works. Maybe it's my own fault that I got injured, and it certainly was when I was training for the 10K. I literally overtrained myself into injury. Maybe it's the circumstances, like you've caught a cold and there's bad weather. You can't do anything about that, so what do you do? Either way, as runners, we have to learn to adapt and adjust our goals as we go. If we don't, we just put undue pressure on ourselves and it makes us feel worse. Now, just to be clear, I am not one for making New Year's resolutions. I don't believe that there's one day that I can set a goal and other than that, I'm not gonna worry about setting goals. I believe we can resolve to do anything at any time. These are goals I've had for a while. They've been kind of rolling around in my brain and they've evolved out of my personal journey and experience. So 2016 was basically dedicated to how I was gonna manage 2017, most notably the Dopey Challenge. That's goal number one. I have had this goal in mind for about three years, living in Denver on a snug travel budget. This may be the only shot I get at the Dopey Challenge. So this is a very special event for me. Finishing 48.6 miles is the goal. Six medals, four days. Honestly, I think that makes up for any medals I didn't get in 2016. <laughs> After finishing the Dopey Challenge, my next goal is to stop and recover from Dopey Challenge. I want to recover smart and build on what I've created in the last six months with this heart rate training. So for the rest of 2017, I'm doing something that I've only done once before. I am hiring a coach. Coach Christine Hinted created the training plans in the Train Like a Mother Club book. I've had tremendous success with using these plans in the past, so I thought I would contact her directly and see if she would coach me for 2017. So she will be guiding me through my next two big goals, one of which is actually taking another shot at that PR for the Boulder Boulder 10K. I really would like to go sub 60 minutes on that, but we'll see how that goes. The other goal I hope to accomplish in 2017 is going coast to coast with Run Disney at the Avengers Superhero Weekend in Disneyland. I will probably sign up for the Infinity Gauntlet 
development challenge there as well. Now hiring a coach isn't for everyone, but I do feel this is what I need to do for my journey. I feel like this is the right step for me because I know how to train for a race. I know how to get from day one all the way through to the finish line. It's going from that finish line to the next race and the next race after that without having to go back and start back at square one every single time. I've learned a lot about what it takes to get from couch to finish line for almost every distance. It's going beyond that finish line into the next race that eludes me. I tend to take too much time off in recovery and I have to start back at square one every time I set a goal for myself. What I'm hoping to gain out of the next year is building from one race to the next without losing a lot of fitness in between. I also wanna learn how to recover smart and continue training without getting hurt. So that's it, 2016 is in the books and here's to a healthy 2017. I'd like to hear from you. What are your goals for this coming year? Please leave your comments in the box below and if you like this video, give me that thumbs up. That's it for me today, this year. Thank you so much for watching. Get out there, go find your awesome. We'll see you next time. And until then, Happy New Year!